welcome to the great search. So every single week, Lady Ada uses her powers of engineering to help you find the things you need on planet Earth on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is the great search of the week this week? Okay, this week, and this is going to be a big shock to you, but it's a part that's impossible to get and need to find a drop-in replacement. Isn't that that new uh, plant-based burger impossible part? <laughs> impossible part. Well, yeah. you know, there's this part shortage, and uh, we're in it, and um, it's probably going to last a couple more years. And so, you know, we're doing, um, we're being a lot more proactive in our purchasing department to make sure that we can get parts, knowing that it could be like over a year or two until we get um, replacements. And so, I was going to the computer, and I'll show the part that I was tasked by the purchasing department to find a replacement for. Find this. So the AP3429, um, this is a buck converter. It's a really lovely buck converter chip. And um, we make a little breakout for it. The breakout has the, the chip in the middle, an inductor, and some passives. The inductor and the passives are really easy to get, but that chip, you know, it's, it's a very specific chip. Um, so the good news is that we do have some in stock. We have some that will last us, you know, maybe like three or four months. Um, but we no longer like, you know, we used to purchase like 12 weeks before we needed a part because 12 weeks is like forever. Um, but now we're purchasing like a year in advance, basically. So, um, you know, when you uh, go to DigiKey and this is the part I would get, the AP3429, um, standard lead time is 52 weeks. And if I type in like, okay, when is the next estimated ship date? It's in 2024. It's two years from now. Um, so it's 104 weeks lead time. Um, that's long enough that, uh, you know, yes, we'll book some, but I don't expect to be able to get some. So let's find a suitable replacement. Now, because the lead time is so long, sometimes if the lead time is like, you know, four or five months, it's like, well, I need to find something today to kind of like keep production going. But this is so far ahead that I'm actually going to look for some parts that are similar um, in functionality, even if they might not be pin compatible, because it's worth it to do a board respin. I'm like, Basically, if I'm waiting more than like two or three months, I'll just spin the board over, get a new stencil. Um, it's not a big deal, but I want to keep the overall functionality um, the same. So, as usual, um, the first place I go when I look for replacements is I go to the product attributes. And um, manufacturer, I don't care who it comes from. Package, I don't really care. I do want an active step down, and I want it to be a positive buck. Now, I actually don't need it to be adjustable. This one happens to be adjustable, and I have two resistors that set it to 3.3 volts out. But I'm actually totally cool if I get something that's not adjustable. It's fixed output, 3.3 volts, so I'm not going to check this box. Um, I'm not going to check the number of outputs, and I'll, I'll tell you why later. I'm not going to check the voltage in, out, or the current, or the frequency switching. I'm going to check off for a synchronous rectifier, and I am going to check off for surface mount. Normally, I would check off the package and device as well because it's like, okay, I want like a, you know, a SOT23 only. Um, and there were a bunch of SOT23-5 parts that I could get, but some were not immediately in stock. And, and like, you know, it's a little bit of a, it's, it's a, bit of a gambling game because it's like, well, what if I can get a similar part in three months or I can get a part right now, but it's got a different package. So it's like you got to balance what you think you can get and um, whether it's worth your time to do redesigns. So let's view similar. And um, the reason I didn't pick one on the output is because there's actually a couple that have one or two outputs and there's also that dash. And um, I wanted to make sure that um, I did end up, you know, when I, I ended up looking, because I was doing the search earlier this week, um, I did find a good part under like the dash um, number of outputs. So let's go down. Okay, so um, the most important thing for this um, board is that it has a two peak, sorry, two amp switch inside. Uh, it's, it's nice, you don't need an external MOSFET. It's got the switch inside of it, and it's also got, you know, the diode, the, uh, you know, the two, basically the two switching switches, uh, FETs inside. And it's a, got a two amp um, limit, which is really nice. So let's make sure that we get something that's close to two amps. So let's look at the current output. Um, this isn't necessarily the switch current, but it's a really good approximation of it. Um, the part that I was referencing before had two amps. For a buck converter, pretty much the current output is the same as, as the switch current. That's not true for boost converters, by the way. It's, but it is true for buck converters because they're reducing um, the voltage. And so like the current, um, is 
reduced, not increased, right? When you increase the voltage, you have to increase the in incoming current. When you're reducing the voltage, um, you're reducing the incoming current. So current output. So we definitely want it to be, let's go for at least 1.5 amps up to like four amps. You know, I think that's reasonable. That cuts it down a lot to, to 2000 remaining options. Um, you know, now we kind of see like there's a couple different packages here. I do want something that's about the same size, even if it's not the exact same package. Like there's, you know, I could get it. There could be a DSBGA package. There could be a QFN, but I want it to be small and about the same size. So I don't want a lot of pins. I want to keep it simple. Um, so I'm going to go with like, you know, here's all the different variations, but I'm going to go with like, you know, anything that's like a SOT 25, whatever, the, you know, basically a, you know, very similar to package to this, but I'm okay with six or eight pins. And then I'm okay with, well, let me start with that, you know, and I can always get maybe, a, you know, I can add a DFNs or something here. Okay, I don't want SYC, way too big. So let's look at those. Okay, cool. Um, so let's see what we got down here. So um, we do start to see some parts that are kind of similar. Um, the AP, you know, this is very similar. You know, when you have AP3429 uh, from Diodes Inc., they make a lot of other similar um, buck converters. Um, this one has actually, it's quite nice, has a three amp switch built in. Uh, synchronous, you know, close to one uh, megahertz. And it's, um, this is a TSOT 26. This is a six pin, uh, not a five pin. So it's not pin compatible. So let's first quickly look for like, what. let's find one that's definitely like, you know, pin compatible. So that would be a SOT 23.5 or maybe an SC74, I think that's the same thing. I can never remember. And um, when we do that, if we're like, okay, it needs to be pin compatible, um, we do get a couple options. This one was one good one. And um, one, 1 1.5 amp current, um, very, I think this package will fit. I think this is very similar to the SOT. 23, uh, you know, high frequency, 1.5 megahertz. So that was a good one. And then of course this one, let's, let's sort by stock. Let's see what's available now. Not a lot. <laughs> um, let's instead look at ones that have two amp current. Cause like, you know, we, we reduced that re requirement, but let's go back and see if there's anything. So the, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of good options. So it turns out that this one, the TLV, um, 62569. I did look at this one. I'm trying to remember. One of these it actually had the ship date. Or maybe not. This was the closest alternative. Okay, so this one had a ship date of like only a year from now. So, you know, that's one alternative. Um, you might be able to get this faster if I really do need something that's pin compatible. Um, but like I said, I'm actually kind of willing. Uh, so the part that was I was willing to get is a TLV 62569. So that's pin compatible from TI coming pretty quickly. But if I don't care about the mounting type, like if it doesn't need to be pin compatible, um, what I'll do is I will uh, X out, like because these are all the things that I, you know, I searched by. Oh, sorry, not mounting type. Uh, package case. You know, I made this as a requirement. If I remove that as a search element, and I get back to like all my my options, and then I'm I go back to um, maybe all only the six DFNs and the SOT 23s. Let me see if I can find the part. So in the end, what I, I thought was, you know, if I'm willing to go with a slightly different package. Um, hold on. I still have my current limitation, right? Did I? Yeah. And I went with what was available. I think it was. Uh, 
Why? Oh, I don't remember what it was. I wanted something that was a SOT 23.6 because that would be the easiest for me to adapt the um, Man, it did not come up. But it was in this family. Hold on. It was package case output configuration. I know it was this part, but I'm trying to remember how I found this part. Oh, because it was two it was two and a half amps. That's why. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, it's too picky. When I removed the pickiness and I said, it doesn't have to be just two amps, it can be two amps or a bus. This is the, this is the thing, this is why the search is actually really hard. You want to be specific, but there are a lot of times where it's okay if it's over. And there's some times when it's better when it's under and you just have to kind of like, be careful. Like one, as you've seen, don't be too picky. I was like, oh, I only want exactly two amps, but then that search constrained and I didn't actually find something that was a really good option. When we have uh, parts of plenty, we'll rename the show Lady Ada's Picky Parts Pick, but for now it's the great search, so don't be so picky. That would have been a really good one, Picky Parts Pick. Um, so this is what, <laughs> sorry, this is the one I found. We can't be picky right now because there's not enough parts. There's not enough parts, but this part has almost 50,000 pieces in stock. So the only thing that's, and it's a very good price too, it's like, you know, 20 cents in quantity, um, adjustable output. Um, what's nice is actually this has a really wide input range, 4.2 volts to 18 volts. Uh, and a wide output range, uh, 0 0.8 to 7 volts, 2.5 amps output, even faster frequency. So in, in, in essence, this is actually a better chip than the AP3429. The only thing is it's got an extra pin because it, it has a little, I think it has a little booster inside and you have to add a capacitor. So, hold on, there's no data sheet here, but let me search for data sheet. Okay, so instead of five pins, you've got six pins and the extra pin, you've got the ground and input, the switch and the feedback, the enable, and then BST, which is your, your boost pin. And yeah, this is, this is used um, to boost the internal, um, there's a little mini switch cap, I think, that is used to uh, power the internal FET switch. So, you know, you can turn it on and off very quickly. So you have to add another capacitor, which is a very small capacitor. It can be like a 603 or 402. It's not... It's not a current, you know, it's not like there's not a current because it's, it's capacitively coupled. Um, but the rest of the components are the same. So basically, you know, if it really is two years until I can get the AP3429, what I'll probably do is I'll redesign this board and I'll scooch like this part over, this part over a little bit to add the capacitor and I'll swap this to be a six pin part. I'll have to revise the stencil, but the functionality is going to be the same. Um, because it's only a better component and then I'll just update the description to say, hey, like we can't get this part because it's like 2024. Um, who knows what's going to happen on this planet in two years. It could, certainly couldn't have guessed what would happen back in 2018, what would happen in 2020. Um, yeah, it's not a good idea to try to guess what's going to go on. I'm not even getting there. Uh, and that's, so that's what I would do. So I, you know, I came up with a couple options here. Um, one I could probably get within one year and then one that's kind of a better option. Considering I can get 50,000 of these, I'm probably going to start the revision now. I know it's really early, but in six months, I'm going to run out of that part. I want to have something ready ahead of time, which is another thing I would recommend because I think when this part shortage started, I think we were all like, ah, oh, well, you know, like they'll come back eventually, right? Like it's going to end. <laughs> I don't know that that's true anymore. And so what I would recommend is look now what parts you won't be able to get for a year. Like, get all your parts for a year, and if you can't, do the redesign now. Don't yeah. wait till later, um, because I just got, like, swept up. You know, I basically got blindsided by a part that, I, I'll be honest, I was promised, like, oh, no, you're going to get it. You're going to get 10,000 pieces. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. And then they just, like, basically told us last week, like, you're never going to get it. Yeah. Um, and it's not like that song from, like, the 90s, never going to get it, never going to get it. And there was, I think that was, right? Is yeah. That song? Okay, so it's like that, but with STMP 811s and CP 2104s. Anyways, my great search part, the AP 62250. It's actually a pretty sweet buck converter. If you need like a like 20 cent buck converter, um, this one is quite nice. It'll do the job. And that's a great search.